the biggest upset of the Euros. Turkey 2, Austria 1. Ralph Ranić ball against Montella. Where did it go wrong? Where did it go right? Because just a few months ago, this Austria team destroyed this Turkish team 6-1. What did Turkey do? Because it was special. I'll tell you that for free. It was special. It was surprising. Most importantly, it caught Austria by surprise. Like, this is an Austrian team that throughout the whole Euros, everybody's raving about. Oh, they're amazing off the ball. Their structure. They press relentlessly. I didn't see any of that yesterday. Where did Turkey get it right? And most importantly, how did they shock the whole world by breaking a 16-year curse? If you're new, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit the like. Let's get into it. Okay, let's, let's talk structures. How, how did Turkey set up? What did they change? In March, when they lost 6-1, they set up in a 4-2-3-1. Now, let's not forget, this is a Turkey team the other night. They didn't even have their best player in Hakan Çavanoğlu. But it was the Fenerbahçe brothers, the Fenerbahçe fullbacks, wingbacks, shall we say, that destroyed this Austrian team. So how did Turkey set up? They set up in a 3-4-3. Three, three. three centre-halves, two midfielders, two wingbacks, three players in attack that roam in Barish, Gole and Kenan Yildiz. But the beauty in it is in the modern game. So many teams have a different structure on the ball. They have a different structure off the ball. Turkey on the ball were brave. 3-4-3. Three, three. Mulder on the right. Kalioglu on the left. Bombing forward. Stretching the pitch out. They bomb forward. They allow Arda. They allow Kenan to tuck in. But where it was special is the fact that as soon as they lost the ball, it wasn't a 3-4-3 three, three anymore. It turns into a 5-2-3, which basically just means the two wing backs drop down to full backs. A blank row of five, which is hard to break down. And Austria struggled to break it down. Now, let's look at the benefits of the 5-2-3. From what you can see, it's compact. You've got a lot of bodies back. It's compact. You've got a lot of a lot of bodies back. You cramp out the key areas. The central areas are cramped out. Why? Because you've got two midfielders. Beneath them, you've got three center halves. The flanks are cramped out. The midfielders might shuffle across to help the wing backs in defending. You're cramped. You're flexible. Because, like I said, this is a formation that can go from a from literally a three four three to a five two three. It's a very flexible approach and it gives you so many dimensions to break down the opposition offensively and defensively. But most importantly, it always gives you an opportunity to counter-attack. Why? Because you've got wing backs stretching out the pitch. If you stretch out the pitch, what do you do? If you stretch out the pitch, you stretch out the opposition. You stretch out the opposition, more space. More space for the other Goulets. To dictate and run the show. What a player. 19 years of age. First major tournament. In front of the, in front of the whole world. Real Madrid star. This, this kid is looking like the baby Tony Cruz. The Turkish Tony Cruz. Dropping deep. Dictating play. Dictating the tempo. Putting strings left, right and centre. The corners. Cash money. That was Turkey's setup. What changes they made and how it benefited them. Let's look at Ralph Ranić ball. Austria. What did they do? The typical 3-2-5 on the ball, off the ball, 4-3-3. But remember what I just said. Off the ball, 4-3-3. You look at the screen. This isn't your usual 4-3-3. Now, remember what I said about Turkey with the 3-4-3 wing backs. Stretching out the pitch. When you look at Austria, it's a 4-3-3, which is narrow. So in a sense, when you play narrow, you've got bodies close to one another, in close proximity. 
it does give you that numerical advantage. You can bounce the ball. Why? Because you've got players close to one another. It's nice. It's fancy. It looks good on the eye. But does playing narrow counter a team that's playing wide? No, it doesn't. And that's what made it so difficult for Austria. Like, towards, towards the end of the game, we're talking Austria having 65, 70% of the ball. But what did they do with it? Crosses from left and right, which were cleared every single time. Shots from long range, which went over the bar. When you look at this Austrian team and the way everybody raved about them, their key strength, pressing. They are pressing animals. But the funny thing is, whenever Turkey had the ball, they couldn't press them. They couldn't press them. Why? Because the wing backs were always there. You look, you look at the picture. Look at how open they are. Look at how open the wide areas are. There's always an outlet for this Turkish team. And at the end of the day, fair enough. Both of the goals came from set pieces. But listen, we're talking knockout football. Set pieces are very important. Because set pieces are a guarantee. In football. Now, the standout performers, for me, I feel like Arda Gule. This is a kid that's made it his tournament. He's made this Turkish team his own. I am the captain. I am the leader and I will lead by my performances. That kid is on fire from the set pieces, from the passing, from the decision making. Off the ball, I feel like he doesn't get as much credit for it. The wing backs. Most importantly, Karayoglu. Like, th this is a kid that European clubs, left, right and centre, should be targeting. And I've been, I've been screaming his name for years. He deserves the attention. He deserves the plaudits. Because he put in a shift that I don't think I've ever seen on an international level before. Up, down, up, down. And most importantly, when it comes to the wingbacks, the level of concentration throughout a 90-minute game to know... Now it's time for me to push up. Now it's time for me to sit back. Now it's time for me to shuffle. Now it's time for me to overlap, to underlap, to do that for 90 minutes straight. Bearing in mind, the whole second half was Austria. To remain focused, I have to give them their credit for it because it was impressive and they put in a shift and a half. Let's not forget even Kadayoglu in the dying minutes, picking up the ball and setting up Barish. The engine, the tenacity, the commitment to getting that win was, was impress impressive. But most importantly, Merik Demiral. Now, fair enough, everybody might say he scored two goals. That's why everybody's praising him. I'll be so honest with you guys. The goals are nice. They're fancy. They get a lot of people's attention defensively. This guy was rock solid. Rock solid. Even if he didn't score those two goals, he would have probably still been my man of the match. Every single header cleared it out. Clearances, interceptions, 90 minutes straight to remain focused, to remain concentrated and get your team over the line. But in summary, Austria 4-3-3 narrow. 4-3-3 narrow will never ever be able to counter a team that wants to play long, has wing backs and stretches the pitch out. Now, fair enough. If Turkey set up in this manner and tried to play football, pass it around, players in close proximity, it would have been difficult. Why? Because they're stretching out the pitch. The gaps between the players are too big. But in a sense, Moncella exposed Ralph Ranić's weakness. If you want to play narrow, I will play wide. And it leaves you now in a predicament. Either you play wide to cancel me out or it's Turkey v Austria. Your style versus my style. And let's see which one comes out on top. And Turkey came out on top. But anyways, big up everybody tuning in. Make sure to hit the like. Make sure to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on another one.